Hi, good morning, Tim from Scott Country International. Back with another Alpex video, and this is the one that everyone has been waiting for. This is the uh, latest firmware edition for 5.5.110. Now, this gives you some extra features that everyone's spoke about and requested for the initial release from the Alpex. Um, feet per second, G1, all that jazz. What I'm going to do is just go through that again now. As I did with my other videos, we'll just step by step it. And I'll show you through, I'll screen record on my phone as ever so you can see as I'm talking through what icons and what stuff is different. Um, I would have filmed this outside, but we've had our two days of summer in Northumberland, so we're indoors. So what I'll do then is I'll just set my phone to screen record. And as we go, I'll talk through the big key changes that we've got within the Alpex. So as you would, turn it on. First thing, first sort of thing you're gonna see uh, change is the size of your display in the inside. So it's been slightly increased and the information for your range, LRF and distance has been increased as well, ever so slightly. So that's the first thing you'll notice is when you turn your scope on. Next big thing will be when you hit your menu button, for the LRF users, you've got where you'd have day, night. You now have a green screen and a yellow screen, and obviously again, auto. As you would with the old Alpex, the A50T, they've incorporated that in there for the visually, um, not so visually impaired, but the hard hard to see for some people some color some people can't see certain colors or color blindness so they've got them screens in there to aid everyone to get the best experience they can at their alpex so that's the first big change on uh, the new 110 <coughs> update into advanced settings as you would so zero in profiles I've just got this set on a, a spare zero in profile I've got here um, Again, no change in that one. Into zero in, as you'd expect, everything's the same. Some of the icons have slightly changed, ever so slightly, but no big real change in that one. Ballistic calculation, this is the, the next big jump of where everything has changed. So, as you'll see there, ballistic calculator on or off, self-explanatory, you've got selected profile now that is the pro as i said in my previous video i keep profile a on the biggest caliber which mirrors page one page two profile b etc etc it's just how i keep it simple in my head and it's easy to remember where you are now the next big one is the aim point style so as you'll see flicking across the screen there you've got different styles of marker so you've got the green dot You've got the traditional cross as you had before. You've got like two chevrons with a um, with a line on them, a join in them, sorry. And then you've got a triangle denoting the point of the triangle is your aim point. So we'll just leave it on the two chevrons for now. Again, aim point color, self-explanatory. You can change that, which is a massive improvement. Um, when you're trying to see a red cross on an already red reticle against a, um, say like a deer or something like that, or at night, it, everything is just blurring into one, so it's really hard to see. So these new options have changed that and give you um, a lot more usability, should we say, within your shooting uh, style. Bullet G1, again, self-explanatory, is what everyone wanted, it worked perfect without it but people have kicked and screamed and they wanted it so guess what Hick have done it g7 and gs for the air rifle users initial velocity no change but what you will see there is it's now in feet per second which again everyone wanted feet per second because they couldn't use google or they couldn't work out the difference in meters per second to feet per second and um, so they asked for it Hick provided it Altitude and temperature again in the UK, not, nothing to really worry about unless it's either a freak heat storm or freak heat storm, heat, heat wave 
or some serious cold conditions. You don't need to tiddle around with that. Ballistic coefficient, again, is self-explanatory and your height, your scope height, again, you'll note is in inches and you can change that again. So back out of that page, save parameters, highlight blue, okay. Now another big one that you'll see that most people would have seen on this um, on this option is missing is zoom mode, continuous and multiple. That's gone. So that option's not in this stack wheel anymore, but I'll come back to that and show you when we're on the main screen. Laser range finding, again, no change. Hotspot as it was. Pre-record, so pre-record has been adjusted and tweaked so the air rifle users um, can start using this as on their their hunting and they've, so they can record with the air rifle low caliber. I tested this on a sub 12 and a FAC air rifle works perfect. Again, just talking of air rifles, the integrated um, angle adjustment. So if you're shooting upwards, you will notice on this on this new model or the new firmware that your aim point will come down or up of the reticle where it needs to be to accommodate the angle of your shooting. So if you're shooting up, your reticle will change its holdover position. If you're shooting down, it will change its holdover position. Yep. So again, guys that here have thought of it again and they've got it in there. So you ask, they provide. They don't mess about. Uh, audio, self entry smart IR, same as it was before. Auto screen on and off, no change. Function and settings, everything's still the same in there. Your OSD, so your on-screen on screen display where you can have your time date. Um, you obviously see a lot of people on Facebook, they've got literally everything turned on and the whole screen's full of stuff. I like to turn on mine off. Your pitch scale again, you, that's the little scale up the side. It's been moved off ever so slightly to the right on your, your up and down, your elevation. They've just, just tucked it out the way ever so slightly because you don't really need it, but it's still there if you do want to look at it. And then brand logo, obviously that's your HIC micro written in the, in the bottom left corner. You can turn that on and off. Like I say, I don't like too much on there, so I'll keep it minimal. In the general settings, again, as you would, you've got language, so that little symbol is after you do a restore and it comes back up and you, everyone just rushes through and switches it to Dutch. That's where you need to go back and change it to English. So remember that, remember that uh, icon. That's where you need to do that. Date, again, self-explanatory. Time, yards or meters. This is where you change your data input. Either you want your readout and your information in millimeters or centimeters or meters, or you want it in yards, inches, so on and so forth, yeah? So that's where you change that. Auto power on and off, again, like I said before, if you forget to turn your scope off, that's, you leave it in the cabinet, it will shut off after 30 minutes. Good little feature. Restore, this is the one you need to do after. Every time you update, hit the restore, do a factory restore, um, do a factory restore, this will get rid of the old firmware, let the new firmware sit in, take effect, and not cause any dramas within the scope. All the settings that I've covered before, like Smart IR, Pre-Record, all that jazz, will reset back to the default setting. You will not lose your zero, you will lose your information from your ballistic page. So again, best way to do it, top tip, is select that menu on your phone, take a screen recording of your phone. So I've got all my information saved as in photo form on my phone, just through the scope. So I can always refer to it. If the scope has a has an issue, I can re-enter that data really quickly. Um, so dropping onto the ne next page. This is a new icon, reset. Do not get confused with restore and reset. Reset, literally, does what it says on the tin. It resets it back to factory, first day when it was born, eyes closed, zero gone, lock, stock, the lock, gone, all gone, back to normal. So don't press that, because you'll be crying. 
Diagnostic logs, again, you can have that on or off. So if you're having a issue with your scope, say uh, you think it's losing zero or something like that, you can have that on. Hick then can, can remotely track that and do a diagnostic log and say there was no issue there or yeah, your laser didn't work at this time. So that's a handy tool. And then version, that's your information, obviously, as it says on the tin. How much space you've got, what build you're on, serial number, so on and so forth. So that's a, a quick rundown of the menus. But what I will cover now is a, as a bounce back to, is the zoom. So normally 3.5, you'll jump up to 7, uh, 14, 28 normally on multiple, or you can go in increments in the continuous. Now we're on 4.5, 5.5, 6.6, 7.8, 9, 10, so on and so forth, in like that. Yeah, and it creeps all the way in to 28. I don't like it, but I think it's only going to be a temporary thing for now. And obviously picture in picture, it comes up on the top there. In the bottom left corner, it gives you your zoom. And as you creep in, it keeps you wide on the bottom in your main picture at 3.5 and then incrementally creeps you in all the way in. Not that I ever use picture in picture, but I do really miss the multiple zoom because times 14 was about as good as you're ever gonna get at nighttime using IR. Uh, obviously you can f use a full zoom range in the daytime because there's a lot more light coming in, but artificial light at nighttime, you're getting too much pixelization and if it over times 14 anyway. So being able to crank that in pretty quick to take a sort of a, a longer shot on something at nighttime is a must and I really miss it straight away. It's the, fir it's the first thing I picked up and the first thing I got back onto Hick and said, you need to change this because that, that's really good. But they're gonna run with this one for, for a short time and then um, see what the feedback is and then hopefully they'll change that back. Again, other other sort of key things that we've, we've fired up about changing the reticle center, it's, it's not a drama, Just just get on with it. The reticle is the reticle. You can change the color of the reticle. The center cross is red. That's it. Just just get on with it. It's you've got, you've got loads of different reticles on there, so there's something for everyone. And again, the biggest thing now is feet per second are on there, which everyone kicked and screamed about. And then the holdover marker is now available in a different color. So again. You can you can totally customize everything. So they're the, they're the changes on this first firmware. They're going to be a new. There's going to be a few more coming out. Fingers crossed. Um, little tweaks and little bits changed, but that's the one that everyone's been waiting for. Hope you enjoyed that. Again, any problems with an Alpex, give us a call and we can help you through it. If you like this sort of content, like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell. See you on the next one. Cheers.